the carers and glad to the cleaners and carers and there's dinner school ladies all getting a lot less than men for doing the same jobs or similar jobs. <laughs> Once upon a time, thousands of women decided they'd like to work for Glasgow City Council. So they looked at the jobs available, cleaner, cook, carer, gardener, refuse collector, grave digger. They looked at the salaries for all of them, looked at the job descriptions, and they chose the jobs that they wanted to do. And out of these women, more of them chose to be cleaners, cooks and carers than chose to be gardeners, refuse collectors and grave diggers. Little did they know at the time that they were the victims of discrimination, sexism and injustice. But some clever lawyers, enthusiastic trade unions and taxpayer funded feminist organisations have now informed them that they were and that they can get substantially richer because of it. The argument runs like this. Because, for example, cleaners are paid less than bin collectors, that's sex discrimination because cleaners are mainly women and bin collectors are mainly men. And they argue that these jobs are basically equivalent. Now you could of course ask the question, if the jobs are equivalent, why didn't you choose to be the bin collector instead? And these women might say, well, I preferred to be a cleaner. Then you might say, why did you prefer it? Well, and they'd have some reason why they preferred it. And that might explain why bin collectors get paid a little bit more money. But anyway, leaving this logic aside, a legal case was bought, it's been won, and these thousands of women are now marching around Glasgow until they get their cash lump sums, which by my rough calculations will be somewhere in the region of 40 to 80,000 pounds each on average. The local authority is facing a bill of between 500 million and 1 billion pounds after agreeing to negotiate settlements with up to 11,500 women who've historically been paid less than men for doing work of equal value. Let's see what Nicola Sturgeon's got to say about this. I have nothing but admiration for the women involved. And then she tries to score some political points. This figure between half a billion and a billion, let's try and put that into perspective. Glasgow City Council's entire education budget is not much more than half a billion. So that's the lower end of it. At the upper end, a billion, that is roughly Police Scotland for the entire country. That's their budget, 1 billion. That's how much this is going to cost. As far as I can tell with this, it's only women who are going to be compensated in their pay. But surely that's going to mean that men and women will have been paid different amounts for the same work, exactly the same job. And surely that's going to just lead to more legal action. So for the last 10 years, uh, you're a woman working as a cleaner. You'll be getting this package this lump sum, if you're a man working alongside her doing the same job, you won't be. That's the way it appears to me. Surely there's the opportunity for another legal case brewing there. Now, feminists are often complaining about what they call occupational segregation, which is a ridiculous term. It's supposed to conjure up images of like racial apartheid or whatever. Anyway, occupational segregation, by which they mean men and women tend to choose different jobs. And they think it's a bad thing and they need to break it down so there's 50-50 men and women in every job. But how does this play out on that front? So the women who chose the stereotypically female professions are going to get rewarded by getting a lump sum. And the ones who chose to be grave diggers and bin collectors, uh, maybe professions more associated with uh, males, then they're going to be penalised in the long term. That seems a bit of an own goal to me. The end result of this whole business is going to be that men are, on average, going to be paid less. So if you're a man working as a gardener for Glasgow City Council, when your salary goes down, don't forget who you can thank for that. You know that union that you pay a subscription to every year? They did it. So if you're quite happy with that, keep paying your subscription to them and they'll carry on serving your interests in that way. Now, when you're watching the Scottish Parliament, you hear the rampant feminist extremism in the debating chamber. Not a single MSP challenges it, let alone a party. Now, you may think it's quite entertaining, it's quite amusing, but it's not a particularly important political issue. But it is. Because those same MSPs who complain about austerity, we need funding for public services, they're so vital, we must fight against cuts. They're supporting these women whose claims are going to cost Glasgow City Council somewhere in between one-third and two-thirds of its annual budget. 
and the MSPs are cheering them on. Now, the taxpayer-funded feminist organisation called Close the Gap are already looking round to see who the next victim could be. There must be another council where they could pounce. Maybe a business. Maybe they could even put the business out of business. Uh, maybe the NHS. Maybe they could bankrupt the NHS in Scotland. But their antennae are up. They're looking for another victim to pounce on. Someone needs to stand up against this madness. And that's our job, the Scottish Family Party. But we need your support. Do go to the link below and join us. We need your support. But at the very least, subscribe to us on YouTube. Thanks for watching.